Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In this video, I want to do a recap of chapter 16. Now, you know, quite often what happens is, is um, students, when they get prepped for the ACE exam, uh, this exam, will go through all the physiology and the exercise stuff, which is all very important, and uh, potentially neglect chapter 16, which is essentially the business, legal guidelines, business considerations, and um, I don't know how many times I've I've had students tell me after they've taken the exam, I wish I had ch studied chapter 16. And uh, this has, uh, once again, although in this case, the student actually passed uh, the exam, um, but once again, highlights one of the important things about the examination, which is that depending on which exam you're going to get, you might see a fair number of questions on chapter 16, which is why I want to go over this with you and kind of uh, cue you in on the important things to keep in mind as you're going through the materials. Now, for the most part in the in the business component of the textbook, they're giving you very, very basic uh, information related to business structures and the other elements related to the uh, development of a corporation, for instance. So reading through chapter 16 is a good idea, uh, but what I wanted to do was to uh, get you to hone in on on page 745, remember chapter 16, table 16.1, uh, page 746, 16.2, and 16.3, which is uh, 748, <clears throat> and just get you to realize that these are three really important tables that you want to memorize. And just to go over it real, real quick with you, uh, table 16.1 speaks to the advantages and disadvantages of the different business or the various business structures. It's a good idea to kind of remember, you know, for the most part, uh, what the advantages, disadvantages are for these um, five different business structures from sole proprietorship uh, to a partnership, an S core, and an LLC and a C core, right? So this is the way ACE um, lists it out for you. Uh, the advantages, pretty straightforward sole proprietorship, they're easily created and managed, flow through taxation. Uh, in personal fitness training, honestly, we just never recommend you do this, but that's that's your business. But in the real world, you don't do S-Cores. They have little to no benefit, to be quite honest with you, especially if you're trying to develop a company that's going to make a significant amount of money or at least enough to, to make your uh, annual income what you want it to be. Disadvantages, personal liability, raising capital, yeah, whatever. The disadvantage is the personal liability. The whole point, honestly, of developing a company or making your own business is to protect you personally from a liability perspective. So the S-Core is, the, excuse me, the S-Sole Proprietorship, the S-Core is actually good. Sole Proprietorship, really nothing you would do, but you do need to know that. Uh, the partnerships are easily created. So you can see the connection here between a couple of these, uh, the S-Core, the LLC, and the C-Core uh, give limited liability. That's what LLC means, limited liability uh, corporation. Um, and you can see the similarities with the S core and the LLC, which is the flow through taxation. So these are things you would write down. Just make sure you know them, what the disadvantages are, of course, are, are listed. So table 16.1 is a fairly easy table, I think, to memorize. But I would definitely, definitely have that in your um, in your memorization uh, memorization tables that you're that you want to look at and keep in mind for the test. Um, now you go to table 16, two advantages, disadvantages of owning and operating a franchise. I would read through this. You don't have to memorize everything about it, but just understand the, the basic advantages. And even though they're writing a sentence, obtaining the rights to a recognized brand name that will assist yada, 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 <clears throat> just find one word that gives you, uh, the basic understanding of that sentence, uh, obtaining the rights, recognize branding. That's what it is. That's the advantage of owning a, of owning a franchise. The branding is recognized. So people are probably going to go to your branded facility versus Joe's gym down the road, perhaps. Not, not necessarily sure of that, but for sure that is an initial potential advantage. Access to the business operating systems, right? So you get everything prepackaged. 
that's basically the advantage of owning and operating a franchise. There are disadvantages. There's upfront costs, annual fees that you have to pay the franchise. That's why they do a franchise so they can get the fees. Um, could be a drawback if the brand that was an advantage actually becomes a disadvantage. So now you're screwed if something happens at the corporate level and all the franchisees get uh, get screwed because of now a tarnishing of the branding or the name. <clears throat> uh, the franchisee agrees to follow the operating model and that could be limiting. There's nothing wrong with doing franchises. People do it all the time, but the general disadvantage is that there's a fair amount of money up front. Um, there are a number of these fitness franchises where you won't see break-even numbers for years. That's not what I'm into. I want to see payback on my investment pretty quick if that's what I'm going to do. But the, again, take it take for, for, for what it's worth and just understand and try and summarize the tables. That's really important to do. Because again, you'll be surprised. Um, just had a student that told me um, she had a number of questions, fair number of questions from this chapter just on this area alone. So don't get um, don't get caught with your pants down, so to speak, when it comes to knowing this information. Um, and then the last table related to this is going to be the independent contractor versus employees. OK, so know the corporation breakdown the different ways to structure uh, companies, what are the advantages and disadvantages of owning franchises and what's the advantages or perhaps disadvantages or the things needed um, when it comes to comparing independent contracting versus being an employee. And so they'll give you work details, payment, length of relationship, training and retraining equipment, number of clients. Those are the really important ones, number of clients, the equipment, obviously, as an independent contractor, you got to do everything on your own. And that's the summary for an independent contractor. You got to do it all on your own for the most part. Um, an employee, obviously, there are benefits um, <clears throat> to having uh, access to, if you're at a health club, having access to the clients there. Um, and there are other benefits to it, but there's also drawbacks that you can that you can read through here on table 16.3. That's kind of the point of the video. I just want you to be aware that those are three really important tables, the three main important tables um, to know when you are in chapter 16. So if you have any questions on that, let us know, put it down in the comment uh, section below. Remember to um, subscribe to this channel. Um, by the way, share the videos, right? Like it, hit the, hit the bell so you know, the notification bell so you know when the new videos are coming on board and we are more than happy to help and assist you in passing your ACE exam. Have a great week. See you next week.